I'm Matt Whitbeck. I'm a wildlife biologist here at Blackwater National Wildlife Refuge. This broad, flat topography you see here may not have the, the stunning landscape value of the Rockies, but if you're looking for coastal marsh, this is really what you're looking for. If the refuge system is going to be successful in providing the habitats for plants, fish, and wildlife that were here, that we were established to protect, for us and future generations, we have to come up with ways of essentially adapting to these changes that we're seeing on the landscape. When we look at our management tools, we essentially group them into four broad categories um, or essentially adaptation strategies. Uh, first and foremost, we need to learn how to facilitate the natural migration of marsh across the landscape. The second thing is trying to increase the quality of the shallow open water habitat that's being created. We're looking at ways of um, essentially managing the existing marshes the best we can to try to um, hang on to the existing marshes or the remnant marshes as long as possible, manage them to the best of our ability. And the last thing is where it's uh, feasible, essentially full restoration of marshes. Clearly facilitating the natural migration of marsh is going to be the single most important strategy. So we've got a topography here in southern Dorchester County on and around Blackwater Refuge. It's very conducive to this natural migration. We have to learn how to adapt to the sea level rise and climate change that, that's taking place. So we're kind of moved away from restoring marshes to where they once existed to, you know, that was kind of the old way of thinking. Now we're kind of thinking it's not so much restoring that pre-colonial condition, but just maintaining the ecological functions that were present on the landscape. So we don't need to have marsh in the exact same square foot that it once occurred, but ensuring that there is marsh habitat on the landscape um, somewhere on the landscape to provide the ecological function that was there um, pre-colonial. So there's, there's, it, it may sound like a subtle shift, but it's an extremely important shift in the way we think about managing our lands. So the, the main thing that I want to point out here is this is a really good example of these black water marshes in the early stages of a breakup and conversion to open water. But if you look closer, if you really kind of get down and start looking at the, the surface of this marsh, you can see it's beginning to break up and fragment. Um, what we have here is essentially a, a clump of marsh vegetation, but it's surrounded by this, uh, by this open water. And you have this, this loose um, organic material here with lots of uh, um, undeteriorated marsh material. And this is really what a lot of these pond, the bottom of these ponds look like, as well as uh, Lake Blackwater itself. If I had to think of one photo that characterized and, and summarized, encapsulated the changes that are taking place on the landscape, that would be it right there. Stumps in a pond. So we have a really good understanding of the processes that are taking place in this marsh. We know that we have localized sea level rise rates of about three and a half millimeters a year. We also have a fairly high rate of subsidence here. So essentially the, the marsh is, is sinking slowly over time. And then as this goes on a few more years, you can see that spot back there. You can actually see the little tumps of um, remnant marsh, um, marsh uh, material there. That's kind of the next stage. So this here close will slowly convert to that. And that will convert to that larger pond we see in the back. Over time, those adjacent ponds coalesce and we have Lake Blackwater. Uh, we also have to develop refuge management actions or habitat management actions that help us deal with the um, um, invasion of Phragmites. We've been treating Phragmites for a long time, but our strategy for treating Phragmites has been tackling where it exists in its worst forms. So where we have these extensive stands of, of, of Phragmites, we're going in and, and battling it there. Now we're kind of stepping back and thinking, you know, maybe the best thing to do is to prevent infestations in these transition zones. So we're really in the, in the process of rethinking the ways of using these tools, um, as well as uh, developing new tools to, um, uh, to essentially work with these changes that are taking place on the landscape. Volunteers with the Friends of Blackwater and National Aquarium Baltimore came in, replanted these, and it's a beautiful little piece of marsh. It looks gorgeous. If somebody wasn't there to tell you this is a restored marsh, you would never know it was anything but you know, a native marsh. So what we're talking about doing is, is coming in and essentially using that same pumping technology we would use for a full-blown marsh restoration and do marsh enhancement projects. If we can pump sediment into a marsh when it looks like this, grout in these open areas, grout in these small pockets of open water where marsh is sunk, 
and essentially grout in these, these uh, uh, breakups in the marsh and add a few inches of elevation to the, the marsh that still exists, you know, we can add you know, 40 or 50 year longevity to this marsh. Now that we know these marshes are sinking and we know the fate of this marsh if we don't deal with it, um, we can use some of those technologies in a new way that make it more economical.